All right. How you doing? I'm Jeffrey Keith with the Aimless News, and today we are going to talk about the PCR test and how it's completely bogus and how the government and authority are using it to keep people scared and frightened and locked down with absolutely no justification and all we have to do as a unit of people, we the people, is come together and demand what I'm about to tell you. How we're going to start out here is with Carrie Mullis, the, the, the Nobel Chemistry Prize winner and inventor of the PCR test. And he is going to explain right here that with this PCR test, if you do it well, you can find almost anything and anybody. And we'll talk about how they get that result in a moment. And hold on a second. Okay, sorry about that. I don't do any editing. All this is live, so, you know, it is what it is. All right, first we're going to listen to Kerry Mullis talk about his own PCR test. Misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there. Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody it starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist. Okay, there you go. The inventor of this test who unfortunately died August of last year, just before all this nonsense started, you know, he would be able to come out right now and say, hey, this is not what the test is for. This is not how it works. But since he's no longer with us, we don't have that opportunity anymore. I'm going to put all these links in the description so you can go watch all these. I'm not going to make you watch the whole video, but there he said it. With the PCR, if you do it well enough, you can find almost anything in anybody. Okay, now we're going to lead up to uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Fauci, who I can't even, you know, I, I'll just be quiet about that. But here is what Kerry Mullis, the inventor of the PCR, has to say and what he thinks about Dr. Fauci. What is it? What What is it about humanity that that that, that wants to go to the, all the details and stuff and listen? You know, these guys like Fauci get up there and start talking. You know, he doesn't know anything really about anything, and I'd say that to his face, nothing. The man thinks you can take a blood sample and stick it in an electron microscope, and if it's got a virus in there, you'll know it. He doesn't understand electron microscopy, and he doesn't understand medicine. And he doesn't. He should not be in a position like he's in. Just to interrupt for a second, Fauci's been uh, the head of different government medical programs and bureaucracy for over 40 years. He probably hasn't had a patient in 50 years. Most of those guys up there on the top are just total administrative people and they don't know anything about what's going on at the bottom. You know, those guys have got an agenda, which is not what we would like them to have, being that we pay for them to take care of our health in some way. They've got a personal kind of agenda. They make up their own rules as they go. They change them when they want to. And they smugly, like Tony Fauci, does not mind going on television in front of the people who pay his salary and lie directly into the camera. Okay, well, apparently the inventor of the PCR test doesn't think much of Tony Fauci, uh, much like myself. So, once again, I'm going to put all these links in the description. You can watch the entire video. I won't make you sit through that. So, with that established, let's see what the esteemed Dr. Fauci has to say about the PCR set test himself and how many cycles should be used during a testing. All right. There have been a number of reports uh 
of patients who shed viral RNA for weeks, as determined by PCR, doesn't seem to be infectious virus. And the real question is, are they a threat for transmission? And I'm wondering if you think we could use a, a cutoff of viral loads determined by PCR to say this patient is no longer infectious, can go home, can go to a nursing facility, because right now the, the physicians are really having a hard time with that. Right. Again, a good question. And what is now sort of uh, evolving into a bit of a standard that if you get a cycle threshold of 35 or more, that the chances of it being replication competent are minuscule. Mm. Okay, that was important what he said there. Cycle threshold. What they do with the PCR test is they amplify it over and over and over again. They call those cycles. So cycle threshold is what he's talking about right here. We'll get into that more in a minute. So that if somebody, and you know, we do, we have patients, and it's very frustrating for the patients as well as for the physicians. Somebody comes in and they repeat their PCR, and it's like 37 cycle threshold. But you never, it, you almost never can culture virus yeah. from a 37 threshold cycle. So the, I think if somebody does come in with, Okay, there it is, right out of Dr. Fauci's mouth. If it's 37, and that's even high, it's meaningless. You can't even get a culture out of that. It's absolutely meaningless, and the FDA recommends doing 40 cycles for every test. All right, let's see what else he's got to say. With 37, 38, even 36, you got to say, you know, it's just, it's just dead nucleotides, period. Mm. Yeah, because as you know, we can't easily culture infectious virus. You don't have a BSL-3 lab everywhere. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So is uh, the the threshold cycle uh, uh, is reporting out a pretty standard practice in doing a diagnosis now rather yeah. than just positive yeah. or negative? Okay, good. Yeah, I mean, if, if when you go in, when, when I get my test, you know, it's negative. When someone comes in and it's positive, they don't give them the threshold until the, you go back and ask for it. There you go. You get your positive test, they're not going to tell you how many cycles there were unless you go back and ask for it. And that's what you need to do. Demand to know how many cycles were run on your positive PCR test. Okay, so we heard right from the man himself. Now, let's look at this. Coronavirus cases plummet when the PCR tests are adjusted. And we'll get into that more in a minute also. Health experts now say that PCR testing for the SARS-CoV-2, the virus associated, associated with the illness, because they still haven't isolated it to even have a sample, and that's straight from the CDC. I should have had that up here. I could show you that, too. Is too sensitive and needs to be adjusted to rule out people who have insignificant amounts of the virus in their system. Hello. And that is what we're talking about with the test threshold is so high that it detects people with the live virus as well as those with a few genetic fragments left over from a past infection or a vaccine or if you've ever had the flu shot and any number of other things. So, like I say, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but there are some interesting points in here that we should go over. Yeah, this Dr. Michael Mina is very good, an epidemiologist at the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health. In three sets of testing data that include cycle thresholds compiled by officials in Massachusetts, New York, and Nevada, up to 90%, 90% of the people testing positive carried barely any virus okay so if we start demanding that we want to know how many cycles are run this can go all go away because it's meaningless if it's over 35 probably meaningless if it's over 30. any test with a cycle threshold above 35 is too sensitive says Juliet Morrison, PhD, a virologist at the University of California, Riverside. 
I'm shocked that people would think that 40 cycles, which the FDA recommends to do, could represent a positive. A more reasonable cutoff would be 30 to 35. Dr. Mina said he would set the figure at 30 or even less. And they are doing 40 to get these positives so that they can keep scaring everybody with cases, 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 cases. It's ridiculous. Okay, so once again, I'm not going to read all this to you. You guys can do that with yourself. I'll put the links in the description. You guys can check all this out. Now, for all of you guys that, you know, oh, who's this? Who's this? What this what's this website? And you demand to see mainstream reporting. Okay, here you go. The New York Times, your coronavirus test is positive. Maybe it shouldn't be. The usual diagnostic test may simply be too sensitive and too slow to contain the spread of the virus. Okay, like I said, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but they basically say that if there's 90% in three set, it's the same quote I just read, in three sets of testing data, it includes cycle thresholds compiled by officials in Mass, New York, Nevada, up to 90% of the people testing positive carried barely any virus. And yet, they are registered as positive and a case. You, you are now a case. Oh, another case, another case, another case. All right. Here's what we should be doing. Boom. Florida forcing labs to report the number of PCR test cycles. This is a game changer. And that is absolutely correct. This is what we should be doing in every state. Contact your state representatives and demand that all these testing centers report the number of cycles that are being used in every single positive test. All right, I'm not going to make you suffer through all this. Once again, the link will be in the description. And I'm going to finish up with this. If that all wasn't enough, the FDA is outsourcing COVID-19 testing to China. At least 10 Chinese companies have received FDA authorization for U.S. testing. I mean, give me a break here. China is doing our testing? Oh, okay. Sounds legit. Once again... Link will be in the description. You can check all this out for yourself. Now, this show is not scripted, so I made myself a few notes. If you have to be tested, and I don't know why you would if you're not sick, demand to know how many cycles the test was run. If it's over 35, as per that little gnome Fauci, the test is useless and a false positive. Also, contact your state representatives and demand that these testing facilities report how many cycles they're using to get a positive test result. This is how we can make all this baloney testing go away if we, the people, say enough already. And this is also how the authorities are going to get the number of positives down after the VAX rollout. They're just going to cut the cycle threshold down and there you go. No more positives. Oh, hallelujah. And claims of we did it. The vaccine works. We are heroes. Hey, yay, hey, yay. Hey. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of the Aimless News. Stay tuned. My next video is going to cover vaccines and their effectiveness and the history of them. Aloha.